Well, first of all, what is an offer to purchase? It's a contract and in the laws of South Africa, it's a very important legally binding contract, not something that I want you to sign willy-nilly without fully understanding the full set of legal rights and obligations that you've got. And because it's a contract, it's open to the negotiations between the parties being the purchaser and the seller, and in some cases, an intermediary or an agent. What is very important for you to appreciate is that there is no such a thing as a standard offer to purchase. Beware when you are engaging agents and they say, don't worry, it's a standard offer to purchase. I've collected many offers to purchase from various sources and I can guarantee you they are all different one from the other, not just in terms of the text, but also in terms of the substance. So you need to understand what kind of deal you're getting into. And because this contract is open to the negotiations, then start negotiating. That's what I want you to do. I want you to negotiate within the boundaries of laws, the boundaries of law South Africa, then everything can be negotiable. So what is the one first thing that I want you to negotiate? I want you to negotiate that you are going to appoint as the purchaser your preferred conveyancing attorney. Now, I know you're saying that cannot be done. Of course it can be done. It boils down to your ability to persuade the seller and or the intermediary why you want this to be done. Now, I insist on this for a number of reasons. The first one is because all my students and myself get a very substantial pre-negotiated discount from your trusted conveyancer. Not only your trusted conveyancer is likely to have all your information on file to really reduce the amount of paperwork and administrative burden that is increasingly becoming a real pain when dealing with property transactions in, in South Africa. That is quite an important reason for you to appoint your conveyancer. And even if you don't get away with that, please make sure that the discount on the absurdly high fees that conveyances are charging to do what is actually ultimately a very simple piece of paperwork is pre-negotiated and written in the offer to purchase. Remember, if it's not written in the offer to purchase, you're simply exposing yourself to massive risk because you might get that discount or you might not get it. Now, on a 1 million rand property, a 20% discount is worth about 3,500 rand. Why should you leave that 3,500 rand on the table? You can use it otherwise to pay for other costs and I know that the transfer costs are always high and save that money, save it for you. There are other reasons that are more complex that I'm gonna share with you in further episodes of this series about why you should be appointing a conveyancer. The second thing I want you to do is I want you to appoint as the purchaser your trusted electrician to issue a certificate of compliance. Again, be prepared to a for a tremendous amount of resistance for that. But there is no law in South Africa that gives the right to the seller to do such thing. So why do I want to appoint my trusted conveyancer, your trusted, uh, your trusted electrician, apologies? Simple, because I want to make sure that that certificate of compliance is genuine. I want to avoid the unnecessary risk of fraud or poor ethics on the seller telling me that the certificate of compliance has been issued, but simply by a friend of his. And now problems with electrical compliance can be very, very expensive for you. You want to reduce risk. You want to eliminate unnecessary risk. Appointing your electrician is a fundamental step in that process. I can tell you a story of a recent deal that I've done where my electrician spotted an illegal, collection, uh, an illegal connection 
that was done so well, he couldn't really understand how it was done. Could have cost me tens of thousands of rands in unpaid bills the one day where city of Johannesburg had identified these, this problem. So third and final power tip for this first episode of how to write an offer to purchase without taking unnecessary risk is never pay any money whatsoever into the agent's bank account. Always pay all monies into the trust account of the conveyancer. It's simply a matter of managing risk and avoiding situations where your deposit might be held ransom of any kind of like legal wrangle between you, the seller and the agent about who breached the contract for what reason. So always have your deposit money in the safest place possible, which is other than your bank account, the conveyances bank account. So these are three very practical power tips that I want you to start using from today to allow you to become a much more successful property investor that gets deals below market value profitably with no risk. Thank you. I'll see you in the next episode.